Do you remember the Twilight Zone episode, It's a Good Life? Here's the synopsis. Set in Peaksville, Ohio, post-apocalypse, the town is lorded over by six-year-old Anthony Fremont. For some unexplained reason, little Anthony has godlike abilities. He can control the elements. He can read your mind. And if you happen to be thinking bad thoughts, well, Anthony will forever banish you to the cornfield. Much like Bruce Banner, you really, really don't want to make Anthony Fremont mad. It's a Good Life ranks as one of the most disturbing Twilight Zone episodes, given that it depicts a nightmare scenario in which the people who should be in charge, namely the adults, are forced to cower and acquiesce to the whims of a child who happens to have omnipotent powers while behaving like a merciless dictator. Now, the reason I reference this 56-year-old episode is to point out that the narrative of It's a Good Life has, well, <laughs> kind of come true in a way. In our present-day PC reality, it seems that an increasing number of people in positions of power now routinely cower and acquiesce to the demands of those individuals and groups that act out in an infantile-like manner. Some recent examples. The Toronto chapter of Black Lives Matter demanded that police officers be banned from attending the gay pride parade this summer. And instead of the pride committee telling this band of racists and thugs to take a long walk off a short pier, the committee capitulated to their demands. Oh, and naturally, the city of Toronto gave BLM an anti-racism award. That's right. Racists receiving an anti-racism award on the taxpayer dime. Then we have the ongoing gender bender nonsense. New York City recognizes 31 different genders. Others say the correct number is 58. Still others maintain it's 63. Do I hear 76? Going once, going twice. You know, it brings to mind the laughable debates of yester century when some people would vigorously argue how many angels could dance on the head of a pin. Yet, what do we do with that dude dressed up as Sailor Moon claiming his gender is non-binary femme spirit unicorn? Well, we should be advising him to seek counseling, but no, rather be it in the campus or in the workplace, his fetish is accommodated as if it's a legitimate gender. And if you have a problem with that, well, maybe you're the one who should seek a psychiatrist while updating your resume. One last example of inmates running the asylum. Earlier this month, a vegan in the German town of Lindbergh complained about a musical rendition of a nursery rhyme that was playing at the town hall. Apparently, the vegan was triggered by some offensive lyrics, something to do with a fox being hunted. Naturally, the mayor caved to her demands, and now the tune has been deleted from the playlist. In any event, be it Black Lives Matter or the tranny community or some uber-sensitive broccoli eater, in each case, their bizarre whims and outrageous demands were and continue to be accommodated. It's as if they collectively have the godlike powers of Anthony Fremont, while those in charge behave like the terrified adults residing in Peaksville. But here's the rub. Unlike the fictional Anthony Fremont, these aforementioned groups and individuals have no real power. But thanks to the virus that is political correctness, apparently standing up to those espousing nonsensical demands might lead to accusations of racism or transphobia or anti-veganism. And so it is that in our present day reality, the lunatic fringe continues to get its merry way. Wow, I don't think even the late grade Rod Serling could have come up with a script this outlandish. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Like what you just saw? Then click subscribe below and never miss another Rebel video.